Hello my soccer universe and I want to start out with an apology. Uh, now that it is winter outside here and uh, many people are working at home, seemingly all our internets are interfering with each other and uh, since we're living so much on the countryside the internet is very unreliable for that reason to make the upload times a little bit more re reasonable and still give you a full content and not really abbreviate it down too much. I decided to not do 1080p videos, seven, but 720p videos for the reviews. Uh, I apologize if you wanna have a higher qual quality. I hope this is only temporarily, uh, but I fortunately cannot really guarantee that either. Having that out of the way too. Uh, it was a weird round. I actually watched Eredivisie two games and I didn't see anything from from Premier League uh, except from highlights. And I actually felt quite good about it. A, I had quite some work in the evening to do it. It's all uh, Premier League. I cannot watch uh, via streaming. And so it was really nice to have the Eredivisie on. And I have to say, I watched so much Premier League that I actually got a little bit tired of the whole thing. Uh, but you know, we'll have a big game come coming up this weekend that will actually make it easier for me to go back into the Premier League mode. But it was a very confusing round, but we have a new leader, a long time in the making. You want to say a Manchester United claims top spot now for real for the first time since 2013 and also Manchester City is coming so uh, the Manchester teams are catching up and are taking over in, in a way Spurs again dropping points unnecessarily and in Holland well, the Netherlands, I should say because Holland is only a small part of the Netherlands uh, in the Netherlands we had uh, two very interesting games of PSV and Ajax. Uh, in the PSV game, the goal, uh, uh, first contender for a goal of the season here was scored. Uh, if you haven't seen it, I will mention that you have to watch that one. And Ajax, um, I'm wearing Ajax, really uh, put the pedal to the metal again, but uh, with late goals saving a victory. I would say Let's go through the results. I mean, the Premier League, we had uh, games from three different rounds. I mean, the first one, and uh, in many ways, the most important one was the round one makeup game between Burnley and Manchester United. And we have the one, the other, the last one, which we'll see in Villa next weekend, hopefully, because we don't know what we, uh, how Villa's situation is. More on that in a bit. Um, where, yeah, I mean, it was a win... I don't say grind out because United was uh, better, but it was, you know, you needed to get this win, you got this win, and you're now uh, three points clear on top of the table. Pogba getting the goal. I mean, a goal by Maguire just before the first half was uh, called off because he basically pushed down uh, the defender, according to all the refs. Uh, and then the second half, the Go from Pogba. I mean, Pogba takes the shot really nicely, but it is deflected and goes through the legs of the goalie. That was rather unlucky. I mean, if, if you see the re replay, it's really an unbelievable goal how this could get in, but important win for United right there. Then, uh, round 18. <laughs> That's the round that should be played, half of, of, of which, and it starts out with... Uh, First victory for Sheffield United over Newcastle United, which tells you how bad Newcastle is at the moment, which hurts me a little bit because I really have quite some sympathies for those guys, but not at the moment. Uh, Newcastle went down a man in the first half and the penalty seals the deal for Sheffield United. Everton also get a win. Uh, they start score, uh, they open the scoring in six minutes through Iwobi, but Ruben Neves uh, quickly can equalize. It was a rather even game there in the second half. It was actually more Wolves, but the uh, goals were scored by Keane. Uh, Ruben Neves also hit the kissing the post. <laughs> the ball kissing the post uh, uh, after the 2-1 uh, winner for Everton. So Everton also rising. Um, Manchester City, yeah, Brighton is one of their favorite opponents. And I have to say, Brighton is one of those teams that I really, I like watching a beat highlights or a game because they always play open, always play forward, but they lack the punch up front in many ways and a little bit too leaky on the backside. And that costs City have 
mostly control of the of the of the game. Phil Foden getting the uh, win, uh, the goal just before the halftime. There should have been more or more goals, but there was a short period of Brighton also was threat threatening. And then most damningly, uh, Raheem Sterling missed a penalty late in the match, and it continues. I think. I have not uh, looked into the stats, but I think the Manchester City, Milan and Lusk are definitely the teams with the worst <laughs> penalty records at the moment. Then uh, Villa is in lockdown. So that game was postponed and so the Premier League said, yeah, let's quickly. We had this uh, game uh, between Spurs and Fulham postponed also because of uh, Covid. Let's play that one instead. Doesn't make much sense, but yeah, the game was played and it was a typical Spurs game. In the first half, uh, many chances they get the game, uh, the goal through Kane, but I think uh, they should have made a few more. And in the second half, they just hold back. Yes, Son hit once the post, uh, but Fulham got really into the in, into the game because Spurs just let them. And this is a pattern that I can defend against uh, big teams. But this is a pattern against small teams where you lose points. If uh, Spurs would not uh, lose points, let's say against West Ham or, uh, or Fulham, uh, other teams this season, uh, they would be right up there. But this is exactly this is what I was afraid that they might not make it uh, because they are leaking too many points against smaller opponents. Cavallero after Lukman assist gets the equalizer for Fulham, and then. We had uh, yesterday a nil-nil between Arsenal and Crystal Palace. I th the less I say about that, I guess, the better. Uh, we have the table, I already said it. Manchester United now sitting atop three points ahead of Liverpool. And also in the chances, they are creeping up on Liverpool. Uh, Liverpool, of course, have not played. And, spoiler alert, we have the big matchup 1v2 coming up this weekend. However, 1v2, really? Nah, look at Manchester City. I mean, they are also in there. We'll see this in the adjusted table in, in just a second. They have a game less in Manchester City with that is not absolutely the odds-on favorite to win this title. It's still a three-way race, but given that United uh, won that, that, that one City is becoming, uh, getting good form. I mean, not good goal-scoring form, but defensively, City is really, really sound. Uh, this season, which is a uh, new look city. We also have your uh, Leicester in there. Everton also keeps the spot up there. You can see it's very, very tight up top. I mean, even Spurs is only six behind, uh, six points behind uh, United. I don't think they will do anything, but they could if they want it. Aston Villa also with two games in hand could be right up there with 32 points, although one of those games is of course against Manchester City. So uh, rather unlikely. On the bottom, West Brom and despite the first win, Sheffield United really, really look um, out of it. I want to adjust the table because it's still very uneven and I think this will also last a while until uh, the whole table gets a little bit more evened out. And we actually that the two Manchester teams are up top with Manchester City actually, if you see the little red bar to, to the right, slightly underperforming. Liverpool at the moment right on track. Um, Gim, you know, their points average is basically leading them to their expected points total that we will see in a bit. Um, with two games less, Aston Villa is bound to move, move up and the same goes for Leeds United uh, moving up over Arsenal. And we see that there are many teams that have 18 games that are all more in the bottom half. Uh, if we look now at the expected standings and I, from the last time I explained to you much and I put here the expected wins, draws and losses, I decided uh, since it doesn't add up easily to 38 uh, games, I give you a points range and I think this is a lot more informed for formative. So uh, basically when we look at Manchester City, in 5% of my 10,000 simulation simulations, City had 70 points or less, in 50% 79 points or less, in 95% of the simulations they had 88 points or less. So a plausible range. In 90% we could expect that Manchester City will finish with a points total between 70 and 88, with 79 being kind of... Um, the target. The 50% is not necessarily the average. Uh, it's differently computed, so uh, statistical terms median against uh, versus mean, although I see, I think Crystal Palace there is a slight devi deviation, and of course everything is rounded, so uh, 
you don't see it, but it, it's not really that important, to be honest. Uh, but we also see that Manchester City are really top five favorites now to win this title. Uh, then Liverpool in the night, very close. Those are the three that will definitely fight for, for the title. I think all the other teams are not in there. We have them from Spurs, Chelsea. Spurs actually going ahead of Chelsea, uh, despite recording on all on win tells you that the rating of Chelsea got decreased. Uh, Spurs, Chelsea and Leicester for the final Champions League spot and then um, I think Villa, Everton, maybe Europa League and I think from Southampton on we go a little bit into no man's land. Uh, Wolves, Leeds and potentially Crystal Palace kind of safe and I think with Brighton we can say there starts the relegation zone. What's happening in the next round? The next round we have the big one, Liverpool against Manchester United, Sunday 5.30. Uh, where I look at the other games, I mean, there is a London derby between Fulham and Chelsea, but you know, uh, that's... Uh, it's probably more interesting than it sounds at the moment, because Fulham has been good, and let's see if Chelsea can at least steady the ship a little bit. Um, Aston Villa against Everton. I think this is a very interesting game because that could actually uh, go a long way in solidifying one or the other team's uh, standings uh, to a challenge for Europe. Uh, and yeah, I'm curious if Spurs can pull out a win at Sheffield United. Let's see about that. Um, and I think Manchester City Cricket Spell is always a game that could be of interest. But I think it all points to Liverpool, Manchester United, and it will end in a really nil nil draw, I'm afraid. Let's see. Eredivisie. I am so happy to have... I've talked a lot about the Premier League because it's, of course, the uh, more uh, important league in many ways. However, what happened in the Eredivisie uh, this week, I was enjoyable. I really enjoyed watching the Eredivisie. It started out with, with Vitesse. Uh, no, 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 it's Vitesse, not Vitesse. Dutch spelling, not French spelling, uh, winning 1-0 against Utrecht. Uh, they had a goal uh, disallowed, could have been higher for off, off, offset, but then uh, the game uh, gets the winning goal in the first half. And yeah, I mean, Utrecht, you need to beat. It's, it's a win. PSV against uh, AZ. Boy, this was an interesting game. I mean, um, it was rather even, then AZ gets a penalty that Cop Miners converts in the third, 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 first. So advantage for AZ. And then in the 39th minute, a corner kick by Carlson is taken out of the air, fully intended. Cop Miners with his heel lobs it over the keeper into the net. That is the goal of the season so far for me. Yes, there was the Lazaro goal for Glad Gladbach, um, but I that could also be a contender in, in the, the score, Scorpion kick. But I think those two goals for sure, uh, of this year, this is the best goal that I've seen so far. Because it was fully, fully intended, So and it took such a nice uh, uh, curve to go in the internet. And big up for AZ. However, AZ has a little bit of a problem of... Uh, not keeping clean sheets and PSV really came out and challenged them and I think a max free kick uh, where Cope Miners, I mean no one is jumping and Cope Miners actually runs back from the wall uh, but then it's a little bit ir irritated is now who is shooting and he just hesitates long enough that Max can pull it into the uh, net and then PSV is really threatening and get the equalizer, which they probably will, would have deserved, but then uh, Cop Miners in the 90th sets up Stanks uh, to get the way to secure the win for AZ. A uh, big blow for PSV because you just were about to beat Ajax, probably should have beaten him Ajax, and now you lose at home uh, to AZ. And uh, we, as we see in the table, this does not mean good things. Fenlo, 4-1 win. Uh, also, Feyenoord gets a 1-0 win over uh, Zwolle. Uh, Sin uh, Sinistera uh, scores scoring a goal, and as we'll see, this also puts uh, Feyenoord now in a pretty ad advantageous position. Uh, 20 against Ajax, also saw that one. Uh, it was really uh, tough luck for um, 20 because two players um, had to come off. I think it was uh, Czerny and uh, was it uh, Danilo? Anyway, uh, had to come off with muscle injuries and the first one through Czerny was in so far um, 
important because it came off Ajax play, play down, Anthony finds Sebastian Allaire who puts it in the net in the seventh minute and then they could exchange. So um, rather unlucky for them. Uh, then I think Ajax took it rather easy and Twente took some time. And again, I have to say, Twente is playing in the Maybach hits. Maybach, you know, from Barcelona from the 80s and 90s, early 90s. Uh, as I said, Ajax then held a little bit back. I think they wanted to play it safely home and Twente came out and uh, it was never... Yes, there were chances for Ajax, but I, 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 I actually thought that by the 25th minute, Twente was really well in the game. Right after the half, they seemingly had scored an equal through Menik. Uh, however, the, it, was, you know, it was a deep ball from uh, their own half. And right at the halfway line, uh, I mean, it was just a fraction of side. Unlucky. Then Ajax controlled the game largely, but you know, um, not being safe, almost Tottenham like. Um, and then the goal came for Twente, where uh, it was seemingly cleared on the line by Grafenberg. Uh, but he kind of put the, he kind of loses control of the ball and loses control himself, and it goes to play Guzello who puts it into net 1-1 one, one. and at this uh, time you really thought oh, is Twente now keeping uh, the others in the title chase and then a very inspired sub -sub substitution Gravenberg, Gravenberg comes off and Hünteler comes on in the 89th and a minute later Sebastian Allaire plays the ball to Hünteler who puts it into the net and then a minute later he makes a second goal and Ajax gets a win in those wonderful away jerseys. Really, really, really um, good and interesting game, I gotta say. Uh, and then Groningen uh, wins 3-2 against Willem II, Arjen Robben still out and it just hurts a little bit. So in the table, with all that Ajax now three points ahead of everyone and again firm, firmly in control of their uh, championship destiny. Feyenoord moves up and is now in second place and then Vitesse and PSV are behind and it's really really tight still although Ajax now having a slight advantage. Um, however I have to say AZ look at their record I mean they have many 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 draws in there uh, if they can go on a winning streak I think they might be the team that could challenge Ajax there as well although uh, seven point is already a big difference but you know maybe if uh, one you can get back uh, winning and Ajax doesn't seem all that um, you know dominant as it has been in previous years to be honest uh, well last year they also were challenged by AZ uh, finished level 11 points and they won a goal difference in an abandoned championship so there you go uh, in you know, uh, AZ leads kind of the last leading pack with Groningen and Twente and then on the bottom I think Emmen is really done and dusted at the moment. Uh, adjusting a table doesn't uh, tell us much except that we can see the bars, we see that Fedor and Vitesse are definitely the positive surprise of the season together with Groningen and on the bottom it's rather bad. But let's look at the expected standings and we see that at the moment Ajax is expected to finish 10 points ahead of PSV and then Feyenoord and then Vitesse uh, to the rating behind. AZ also having a say uh, to get into this Europa League playoff for sure, uh, or Europe Conference League playoff, whatever. And yeah, and then it breaks definitely off. What do we have in the Netherlands? Yeah, almost at the same time as uh, Liverpool, Man United, we have Ajax against Feyenoord, the Classic. Uh, I hope I will be able to watch them both somehow, because those are two big games. Sunday anyway is Super Sunday because there's then also in the evening Inter against Juve, so uh, there's loads to watch there. In any case, uh, let me know if you want to add something to what happened this midweek in England and in the Netherlands. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing and clicking the little bell icon so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. With that, have a wonderful day. Bye!